that what are the different uh, what you call the ways of understanding the networks so we have seen what are the end devices what are the network devices then how they are connected by using the physical media and how to identify the end device or network device means by using the MAC address and your IP addresses, configuring them. And then we are trying to check whether the devices are reachable or not by sending the internet control message protocol, which gives the different whether your network is reachable or not, whether protocols are reachable or not that we have seen in the previous lecture. So here, let you know. Today we'll try to discuss the the address resolution protocol because when a device is connected to your network, then how it will work out, and what kind of pro which protocol is useful to identify and you know find the addresses of other devices in the same network or in the remote network. So the basic objective of this is you know we try to. Uh, you know, understand the the address resolution protocol by just analyzing the address resolutions of your the protocol data units on the same network or remote networks. So we have seen that there are two types of IP addresses. One is physical address, that is your MAC address, and one is logical address, that is your IP address. So here we just compare the role of your MAC address and your IP address as well as the how to resolve to identify the devices in the network by using this ARP protocol or ARP frames. And then we, uh, you know, talk about the ARP issues, you know, how this will create some problems uh, or the vulnerability of this protocol to, you know, give the chance to the attackers to get the IP address of anybody's, uh, any other users in the same network or the, in the remote network. So these are the, the basic objectives of your ARP model. So we talk about the MAC address and IP address in detail first, and then we'll go into the issues of your ARP. So there are two primary uh, the addresses which are assigned to the devices uh, on an Ethernet LAN. So LAN means, you know, you can assume that LAN means it is a private network, correct? So one is your physical address, or we call the MAC address. Another one is your logical address. We call it as your IP addresses. So this physical address is used for the Ethernet, uh, you know, network interface card uh, that communications on the same network purpose. And the logical address, uh, which is used to send the packets from the original source to the final destination. So that may be in the same network or in the remote network. So IP addresses are used to identify the address of the original source device and the final destination device. So that a destination IP address may be on the same IP network or maybe on the different networks. So it may be the same or different networks. So by how to find whether the devices are on the same network or different networks? You are given the two, uh, you know, devices IP addresses. Then how can you find that the both the devices are on the same network and different? Network? Mm -hmm. Subnetting is for scaling purpose. So whatever IP address given to you, you must identify, you, you must do the submasking. If you do the submasking, that will give you the network address. Based on that network address, you can compare of both the devices network address. If they are matching, that means they are on the same network. If not matching, they are on different. Right? So this, uh, the, the most applications, uh, of your destination on the same network, they use the, the domain name systems to determine the IP addresses when it is given a domain name such as your cisco.com or your utsa.edu or any 
So the Ethernet MAC address have a different purpose here in this case. So why it is? So these MAC addresses are basically used to deliver the data link frames with the encapsulation of your IP addresses of your IP packet from one network interface card to your another network interface card and the same network. So if the destination IP address is on the same network, then the destination MAC address will be that of the destination device itself. So in this figure, if you see uh, uh, the, uh, it will clearly shows the MAC addresses of uh, and your IP addresses of your PC one. So you are having the IP address of your device A is 192.168.1.111, sorry 110. This is the host address, host identification. This one is your network address. This part is your host address. And then, you know, the MAC address of these devices are represented with the, in the hexadecimal format. Okay. So that, that MAC address is used, uh, uh, you know, this uh, MAC address and IP address, uh, these are used to share the, uh, the information of any device within the same network, right? So initially what happens when this device A is supposed to install in the network, so device A is, you know, automatically, basically it will have its MAC address, but device A don't have any IP address. So it is up to the network administrator to configure this device A in the network either statically or dynamically. So statically means, you know, uh, the, the manually the IP address assigned by the network, dynamically it may use the dynamic host configuration protocol to assign the IP address of this device A. Okay, so now this device A is having the MAC address as well as the IP address, but this device A don't know what is the IP address of the server, what is the uh, MAC address of this server. So this, until and unless if host A knows the IP address and MAC address of other devices in the network, they cannot communicate. So to communicate, they should learn the addresses of other devices in the network. So how do they do? They simply, you know, generate a, a layer to ethernet header that is encapsulated the layer three IP packet header. So in this, it will have the source MAC address and destination MAC address, source MAC address and the destination MAC address. Okay. But how it will obtain that particular information from the network part. So in this case, uh, you know, if, if they are in the same network, then they will hold the the uh, destination IP address and the source IP address will be exchanged between your uh, the uh, original source and your final destination as said. But if the destination is on the network side, I mean the on remote network suppose. So when this destination IP address is on the remote network, uh, then the destination MAC address will be the same of the host default gateway. Because the, the, this one, in this case, R1 is the default gateway. So the destination MAC address of your host A is the destination uh, for this A, the destination is R1 only, not the server MAC address. So in this figure, you can see the Ethernet MAC address and the IPv4 addresses for your PC A. It is sending an IP packet to a file server here. So uh, this uh, IP packet will go through the different routers which are there in the network. So it is, suppose PCA is sending this IP packet to file server on the remote network, then routers examine the destination IP address to determine the best path to forward the IPv4 packets. So this is similar to how the postal service forward mails that based on the addresses of the recipient. So when the router receives the ethernet frame 
of uh, any a, any uh, host in the network then it decapsulate the layer to information this layer to information is decapsulated so then it will find the ip address of your source and destination so it decapsulate the layer to information and using the destination ip address it determines the next hop uh, device and then encapsulate the IP packet in a new data link frame for the outgoing interface of this network. So that we call the network interface card. So from here, only the, this part is decapsulated by the edge router or the default gateway, and only the the uh, IP uh, source IP address and destination IP address encapsulated your a protocol data unit will be forwarded to the next hub on the same path it is R2. Then when it reached to R2 then from that R2 it will find you know uh, at this router there may be many local area networks. So based on this IP address destination IP address it finds the appropriate path and forward it towards the file servers. Right? So this is how it means what is the if if you uh, observe in this case the mac address of your host a and the mac address of your router one treated as your source mac address and destination mac address but not the mac address of your server why because the server is on another network not in the same network if both are in the same network then it can use the the Ethernet frames to exchange the data without IP addresses. So how it will be done that will be done with the help of your address resolution protocol ARP. So what this ARP do? So if your network is using the IP version 4 communication protocol IPv4 suppose then the address resolution protocol is what you need to map the IPv4 to your MAC address. Your IPv4 to your MAC address and your you know, voice versa. So this topic we just explained how this address resolution protocol works in this case. So what is the basic functionality of your ARP means? This, this address resolution protocol maps the IP version 4 to the MAC address of the devices in the network. So every IP device on an Ethernet network, that means in your local area network, has a unique Ethernet MAC address. So when a device sends a Ethernet layer 2 frame, it contains these two addresses. What are those? One is your destination MAC address and the source MAC address. If you see here every device is having the IPv4 address but they don't know that you know uh, they need the information of the MAC address of every other device in the network. Suppose. So destination MAC address is the Ethernet's MAC address of your destination device on the same local network segment and if the destination host is on the another network then the destination address in the frame would be that of the default gateway as set and source MAC address is your device MAC address so what I need to send the information to suppose uh, a device on the network uh, like uh, which is having the IP address of your 192.168.1.7 the same network then you know uh, in that case I only have the IP address but I don't know the MAC address of that device so how to solve that based on this IP address how do we solve this so that is the basic work of your address resolution protocol so to send a packet to another host on the same network with the local IP uh, uh, address your host must know the IP address and the MAC address of the destination device. So device destination IPv4 addresses are either known or resolved by the device names. 
So this MAC addresses must be discovered first. So a device uses the address resolution protocol to determine this MAC addresses of a local device uh, when it knows its IP v4. So basically this ARP that provides two basic functionalities. One is resolving the IPv4 addresses to your MAC address and maintain a table of your IPv4 to your MAC address. So every device in the network, they try to maintain a table. That table is your address resolution protocol table that consists of two addresses. One is what is the IP address and what is the MAC address associated with that IP address for every device in this network. So here we are having H1 to H4 devices. So there will be the, the devices entry for those devices like H1 device, H2 and so and so. It will have the entry for every device that what is the IP address of H1 is this one and MAC address which is associated with this IP address. Right. So the basic function of this ARP is when a packet is sent to the data link layer uh, to be encapsulated into the Ethernet frames and source side. When a packet comes from network layer to your data link layer, it will be encapsulated into frames. That means your data link layer header field will be added. So the device that refers to this table uh, in its memory and check uh, what is the destination IP address, uh, MAC address of the destination, suppose. So as soon as it receives uh, from this table, when it finds the MAC address, that will be added. Because when it is adding, it must have the source and destination MAC addresses, so that will be maintained in the table. Correct? So in this, it maintains this IP address. The reason is if the destination is within the network or outside the network, if within the network, then the every device should know the MAC address of every other devices. If it is outside the network, that means the destination MAC address of your remote user is the default gateway MAC address. So if the packet destination IP address is on the same network, then the source IPv4 address uh, and then the device will search the address resolution protocol table for the destination IPv4 addresses. If the destination IPv4 addresses is on different networks, then the source IPv4 address and the device will search the ARP table of your default gateway asset. So in both the cases, yeah. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll come to that. Because to know the address of other devices, there must be one, one functionality, one step will be there in address resolution. First, if any device comes into the network, they must, you know, <clears throat> announce their IP address and their, uh, what you call the uh, MAC address in the network. So to announce there, it must reach to every other network, which it follows a communication protocol broadcasting. So upon receiving that, uh, you know, sending that, uh, you know, the address resolution protocol message in broadcast it, then in every other devices, they try to learn and they will try to reply to that request. So in that way, the table will be built up. So we'll, we can see this, in this case. So when a packet is sent, the ARP table will be built up at every node. So what's it? I must send out the ARP request to learn the MAC addresses of other devices with the IP addresses. So now here you tell me they don't know the addresses, IP addresses of other devices, suppose, then which mechanism the sender should use here? For example, host one is entered into the network. Host one don't know the IP address of your host two, host three, and host four, suppose. So 
So, of course, one don't have any information. How many devices are there in the network and how many are active, how many are de deactive. Then it uses this ART function and it broadcasts the information in the network. So, when it is broadcasting that packet, so which IP address it should use? As we have saw that, you know, some of the IP addresses are reserved. Yeah. So, in the host part, it must use the broadcast IP address. So, what is that? Now, host one is having you know, 192.168.1.5, right? So, to broadcast any IP packet with that within the network, then what it should be used? The destination IP address should be? Hmm? Dot zero. Dot zero. If it is dot zero, then it is uh, your network address. That's correct. The destination IP address should have the host part as 255. So that it really goes to every other. <coughs> if zero means it is network address. The host part, if it is zero means it is network address. One means default gateway. 255 means broadcast. In the host part. So, uh, by, by sending, uh, what happens here, uh, as we see, just sending device will search the ARP table for the destination IP address and the corresponding MAC address. If the packet destination IPv4 address is on the same network as the source IP address, they can find it. If the device locates the IP address, it's corresponding to the MAC address, is used as the destination MAC address within the same means uh, the, the layer two frames will be used for that. But how to solve this? Get that. So let me just play this video for you so to better understand. see the devices A and your C. So A don't know the destination MAC address but A know only the destination IP address. So then the Ethernet header and IP packets are encapsulated and they use its own uh, source MAC address and source IP address and destination IP address. And this packet will be broadcasted in the network. So upon this packet going through the network through switch uh, routers, so every device in the network, they will get it. So when they get it, they try to decapsulate the Ethernet header and your IP packet. When they decapsulate the Ethernet header and IP packet, then if any device finds there the, the destination, uh, the IP address, then they will respond to this request packet and they will respond with their destination MAC address. So, by in that reply, when the destination's MAC address uh, is known, then that will be used in this ARP cache table. And sometimes the device knows the MAC address of other device, but don't know the, the, the target uh, IP address. In that case, how it will be done? So in this case, if you see the Ethernet header is having the destination MAC address and source MAC address. So is that clear from there? Upon broadcasting this, your device B also received this packet. 
then device B is trying to compare the IP address of its own from this destination IP address. If it is matching, then B will respond. If not matching, B simply drop that packet. That will not be forwarded again. Okay. So upon received uh, this uh, ARP packet received by your C, comparing the destination, then it is matching, then your C device will reply with the MAC address of your C by putting in the destination. So this is the way of solving the uh, uh, the IP address of your uh, the basic functionality to get the IP address of other devices in the network. Okay, so I'll I'll try to play one more video so that you can understand. PCC, when it received the ARP request, examined the target IPv4 address and compared it against its own IPv4 address and noticed that it was the intended target. So PCC will generate an ARP reply in response to that ARP request. The ARP reply includes its own IPv4 address and its own MAC address. It is sent to PCA. ARP replies are sent as a unicast, so the destination MAC address is that of PCA. PCA receives the ARP reply in response to its previous ARP request. It takes the information, the sender IPv4 address and the sender MAC address, and adds that information to its ARP cache. PCA can now take the packet, the original packet, destined for PCC, take that packet off hold, and has the information it needs to send that packet to PCC. So it takes the information from the ARP cache, the MAC address, and adds that to the Ethernet header as the destination MAC address. PCA can now forward this packet in the proper Ethernet frame onto PCC. Have you got the information? Shall I play again this? Let me play again just because this is very important when we talk about the video, we saw an ARP request from PCA looking for the MAC address of PCC. In this video, we will see the ARP reply in response to the ARP request. PCC, when it received the ARP request, examined the target IPv4 and compared it against its own IPv4 address and noticed that it was the intended target. So PCC will generate an ARP reply in response to that ARP request. The ARP reply includes its own IPv4 address and its own MAC address. It is sent to PCA. ARP replies are sent as a unicast, so the destination MAC address is that of PCA. PCA receives the ARP reply in response to its previous ARP request. It takes the information, the sender IPv4 address and the sender MAC address, and adds that information to its ARP cache. PCA can now take the packet, the original packet, destined for PCC, take that packet off hold, and has the information it needs to send that packet to PCC. So it takes the information from the ARP cache, the MAC address, and adds that to the Ethernet header as the destination MAC address. PCA can now forward this packet in the proper Ethernet frame onto PCC. So here, if you see in this case, when your PCA is trying to send the packet to every other you know, the destination in the network. 
the PCA don't know the MAC address of other devices. So then if you observe here in the internet header, which address it is using the destination map address. So what is the destination map address that PCA is using and broadcasting this there? Because PCA don't know the IP address. But to build this, PCA requires the destination MAC address and it knows from the IP address. So target IP address is there, but target MAC address is not there. So how to find out that? You see here the destination MAC address is FFFF. What is this? The MAC addresses are represented in hexadecimal. So F means what? It is F means here in IP address, whatever you are using all once in host part. In the destination you are using all once. For MAC address. So that's why I played this video twice to understand that. Because every field in the packet, if it is not, you know, the, if there is no entry in every field of the packet, that packet will not be forwarded in the network. So to get this MAC address, here we got the question mark because we don't know here. So every field in the Ethernet header or your ARP request packet, the IP header, every entry must be there. So the most important part here is when the device A don't know the MAC address of others but only knows the, the target IP address, then it will give the destination MAC address as FFF, that is the broadcast address that MAC address reach to every other device. So upon this ARP request received by your C, then your PCC is filling this target MAC address with the MAC003C as source MAC address, destination MAC address is your PCA's destination MAC address and uh, source IP address in this ARP request uh, reply, source IP address is 192.168.1.50, destination IP address is this one for ARP reply. So that is the way of, you know, the getting the IP addresses. Now, by removing the entries from the ARP table, how it will work on that, that we'll see the another part, the, the ARP role of your IP address, you can see that video and then we'll discuss this. IP address itself to 168.1.110. Okay. In this video, PCA has an IP packet, source IP address itself at 192.168.1.110, and destination IP address 10.1.1.10, which is an IP address on a remote network. So the destination MAC address will be that of its default gateway, 192.168.1.1, the router R1 in this case. PCA checks its ARP cache for that IP address 192.168.1.1 and there's no entry with a MAC address. So it puts the packet on hold and creates an ARP request. 
The ARP request has the IP address of the router, 192.168.1.1, and the target MAC address is unknown. The destination MAC address of an ARP request is a broadcast. So it will be sent to the switch, and the switch will flood it out all ports except for the incoming port. PCB receives the ARP request, compares its own IPv4 address against the target IPv4 address in the ARP request, and notices it is not a match, so it is not the intended target. PCC receives the ARP request, compares its IPv4 address against the target IPv4 address, and it is not the intended target either. Router R1 receives the ARP request, compares its IPv4 address against the target IPv4 address, and it is indeed a match. It is the target of the ARP request. So Router R1 will issue an ARP reply in response. It will include its own MAC address, 000D, along with its IPv4 address. The destination MAC address of the ARP replies a unicast directed for PCA. So it is a destination MAC address of 000A, so PCA receives the ARP reply. PCA, when it receives the ARP reply in response for its ARP request, sees the target IPv4 address and the target MAC address and adds that to its ARP cache. It now has the information it needs to forward the packet which is on hold. So the destination MAC address is now going to be 000D, that of the router R1, its MAC address. And now PCA can forward the frame onto router R1. Is that clear, please? So, but that's the way. So every uh, device in the network they try to build their ARP table by sending the, the ARP request. The uh, targeted uh, devices they will give the uh, their IP address and their MAC address, and so that the ARP table will be built out. And sometimes, you know, maybe you know some device after a period of time, the device may be deactivated or maybe goes out of the network. But still, in the ARP table, the entry of that device will be there. Suppose, for example, in this case, uh, uh, suppose the device C is goes down, suppose. But still, in A's ARP table, its IP address and MAC address will be there. So how to remove that? So for every device, the ARP cache timer that removes the ARP entries that have not been used for this specific period of your time is one way. So that here we are using the cache timer means every device is having a limited number of memory, limited amount of memory. In that case, it can simply remove the entries after a period of time. So how it is going to be removed that? So the timer that defer depending on the operating system of your device but it uh, you know gives the timer for every arp table that after uh, you know the uh, 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 certain uh, timestamp it will be automatically removed from the the entry will be removed from your address table so the commands may also be used to manually remove some of or the all of the entries from this table but after an entry has been removed, the process for sending the ARP request and receiving the ARP reply must occur again to enter this map table if, if it is required to communicate again with these devices in the network. Okay. So for removing any entries from ARP, one way is set the timer. So in every 15 days or every one month, the IP address is and the MAC addresses will be removed, the entries removed from ARP cache, or else you can go through the manually and you know uh, by giving certain commands you can remove the entries. So what are those commands? The ARP tables on the networking devices. 
So, uh, what are the networking devices? The routers and switches. So, on those networking devices, how these address are you know removed? Suppose on a Cisco router, it shows the show IP, your ARP, the IP address of your address resolution protocol. By giving that, it will give you the which protocols they are using. In that protocol, what are the IP addresses are used? And what are the, uh, the the MAC addresses of those devices? The hardware address or MAC address, which is associated with these IP addresses, and the interface through which interface of that router. So routers may have their 32 ports or 64 ports. So for every port, there will be an interface. So suppose on Windows machine, suppose PC, if you give the command that ARP minus A for your addresses command is used to display the ARP table of your PCs. So it gives your own information and the IP addresses which are built based on the ARP request and uh, reply, it will give you the details of that command. So why this is used basically in this concept to communicate actually, communicate each other every device in the network they are trying to learn the mac address and ip address of other devices okay now in this way the devices they are replying for the arp request by providing their mac addresses right is this a vulnerable for any system or for any uh, devices in the network how So anybody can know that. So it is just like, you know, spoofing that, right? So uh, once you go through the your lab session there in Wireshark, you are trying to examine the Ethernet frames uh, by using this Wireshark tool that you can find what are the MAC addresses and the IP addresses that you can use these commands and find out the ARP table in that laboratory. So what basically you are using the ICMP frames for communicating in that frame you are going to find the Ethernet uh, frames and uh, investigating the what are the IP address and MAC addresses are there which are already configured in your network. So what are the ARP issues that you will find in this the ARP that broadcast the uh, ARP request is simply broadcasting. So your ARP spoofing will be done. How it is? If you see here, there is a shared uh, media or multi accessible. So there is a common communication channel among all these devices. Correct. So this ARP can broadcast or flood the, the local media within this network. So as broadcast frames, an ARP request is received and processed by every device on the network. So every other device knows what is the IP address of this device, sender device and what is the MAC address of sender device. So on a typical business network, this broadcast would have the minimal impact and network performance. But if many devices start accessing the network services, at the same time, suppose if they, we have here uh, seven devices, if every device trying to issue the ARP request in the network and they are sharing the common communication channel media, then what happens? There will be a congestion. Your network performance will be degraded because of congestion. Because of this, the capacity of this common communication channel is not able to accommodate all the ARP requests comes from all these devices, some of the packets will be dropped. So then there will be a ARP request packet drops are there. So the same request will be retransmitted again. So after the devices send out the initial ARP broadcast and have learned the necessary MAC addresses, 
any impact on the network will be minimized. So from here, the ARP spoofing can be done. So the ARP that issues the ARP broadcast and ARP spoofing will be done. How? The use of this ARP can lead to potentially a security risk that you know every the actor they can try to know the IP addresses of other devices and their MAC addresses of other devices in the network. And for any attacker, the most important uh, you know the thing is to learn the IP address and MAC address of the the target. So the threat actors use this ARP spoofing to perform the ARP poisoning attack. So it is a technique used by a threat actors to reply the ARP request. That means what? Actually, whatever the ARP request is there, that is not intended to this user, but that user is filling the information that it's me. So the IP address is others, but MAC address is the threat actors. So when the sender sends that packet in the same network, in the local area network, it is the frame is the Ethernet frames will be a uh, Ethernet header is used to broadcast or you know unicast the information letter. But actually the packet is intended to suppose for B, but because of the false information given by your actor C, the packet is going to this. Because in the Ethernet frame, it is in the same network. So in the Ethernet frame, first they go and check the MAC address of destination. So destination MAC address is your C here. But actually, it is B. So that is the threat. So it is the threat actor sends the ARP reply with own MAC addresses. And the receiver of your ARP replies the, the add the wrong MAC address on the ARP table. And after that, they are trying to send these packets to the threat actor. So once these packets received by your threat actor, he may act as an active attacker or your passive attacker. Active attacker means those packets may be modified. Passive attacker just to know that what information is there in the packets. Okay. So let me just play this for understanding. Welcome to ARP spoofing. This is going to be great. To get started, I've got PC1 here that wants to communicate to the web server. PC1 is on the 192.168.1.0 network. The web server is on the 2.0 network. For PC1 to get there, we've got to make our way through this router, which is R1. R1 is acting as the default gateway of our network with IP address 192.168.1.254. R1 has the MAC address ending in 9902. So PC1 is going to have to communicate with this router in order to make its way to the web server and get a response back. Now, quick recap of how ARP works. In order for PC1 to get to the web server, it needs to know the MAC address of its default gateway. So we open up PC1, go to my command prompt, and we're going to do an IP config space forward slash all. With our IP config forward slash all, we'll see that PC1 has its MAC address of B0EE. It's got an IP address of 1.10. And it knows the default gateway IP address. It knows the router is 192.168.1.254. However, if I take a look at my ARP cache with an ARP space hyphen A, there's nothing in there. It doesn't know the MAC address yet for router R1. So if I were to send out a message, like maybe you want to ping 192.168.2.100, that remote web server, the first thing is going to fail. And that's because my PC1 is resolving with a who is 1.254. And by the time that ARP resolution happens, the first ICMP ping message timed out. But that's okay. The other three were successful. And now when I check out my ARP cache for an ARP space hyphen A, we can see that my default gateway 1.254 is known as MAC address 9902. Now this is awesome. Lab is complete. Well, what if it's not complete? Well, just to kick it off, one last thing to try out here. I'm going to open a web browser on PC1. And now that we have layer 3 reachability to that server, 
I'm going to go and use port 80 of TCP and hit that server at its IP address. And we have connectivity on port 80 using TCP. So this is great. But what does that threat actor come into play? We'll hop up now. My threat actor, I'll open it up and go to my command prompt, has an IP address and MAC address already. And this is just a normal user on the network that has too much time on their hands, maybe. This user has a MAC address of 2088. It has an IP address of 1.20. And it also understands that the default gateway is 1.254. But what if this threat actor wanted to be a man in the middle? Well, we can make it happen. I'm going to go ahead and go over to my router R1. And I'm going to go into my interface that's connected to this 1.0 network. I'm going to grab that MAC address. And then, we're going to go back to that threat actor machine. Don't worry, threat actor. We're going to give you a gift. On the threat actor's interface, we're going to change its MAC address to spoof the MAC address of the default gateway. Now that it has the MAC address of the default gateway, let's have some fun. I would send a gratuitous ARP over to PC1. Because I don't have the ability to do that here in Packet Tracer. How about we send a constant ping? And this constant ping is going to be talking with the IP address of PC1. And you know what? Who's the source? Us. Us, threat after machine, now with this spoofed MAC address, which would be the default gateway. And I want to show you something. On PC1, let's take a look at our ARP cache now. ARP space hyphen A. We see that 192.168.1.20, and check it out, at that MAC address of the default gateway. And also, let's go over to the switch. Our Cisco networking switch. Let's verify our MAC address team. Show MAC address table, dynamic. And let's take a look at the MAC address learned off of port 2. And check it out. Off of port 2 is the MAC address now the default gateway. So now what happens when PC1, which we're going back to right now, tries to browse the web? Open our web server up. Let's go back to 192.168.2.100. Enter. And it's just timing out. And you see there's no activity lights moving here at the top regarding this draft. It's a timeout. But now comes the fun part. If our threat actor is running a type of analyzer for traffic, such as this network sniffer sitting here right outside, I can go into and click on one of those messages, and I can actually scroll through and read through the headers, as well as even be able to read through the data fields of the traffic. And what we can see here is the source IP was 1.10. That was PC1. The destination IP was meant to go to 2.100. Well, then how was it switched over to the threat actor? Because the switch thinks that off of port 02 is MAC address 9902. This booth was successful. If I scroll down, you can see here in layer 4 info that this thing was targeting port 80. Destination port 80, source port 1026. Man in the middle attack, successful. And if we had better threat actor software, we could really capture this data and at the same time be sending it onwards to the default gateway ourselves. Acting like everything is just fine using a beautiful but unethical man in the middle attack. So if if you if you observe that, then how the attackers can you know work on it. So if it is a local area network, then the every attacker's target is the getting the MAC address of default gateway. Because default gateway is the interface between the local area network and your public network. So the main target of any attackers is the default gateway's information. And once they get the default gateways information, then they try to get the information of other devices in the network to do the actual attacks. Okay, that means first default gateway will be attacked, and then the inside the network it may be the host uh, like your PCs or it may be your servers. So basically, they try to attack the servers. So if during the configuration of your default gateway. If certain ports are supposed open, maybe your FTP port or HTTP port or HTTPS ports are open, then by using those port numbers, the attackers can easily broadcast the, the uh, ARP request and get the information of others. And once learning the IP address and MAC address of others, then start acting as a malicious actor, a threat actor, to what you call the divert the packets from the actual route to the actors. So this is one way of attacking. 
So that is the basic issue of your address resolution protocol. So if you recall the summary, we just call that the IP address is basically used to identify the address of your original source device and your final destination devices. And these addresses are the major uh, the, the uh, information for any of the attackers to act on the network or devices. So these MAC addresses are basically used to deliver the data link frames with encapsulated of your IP packets. That is what we observe. Okay. That means when a frame is generated uh, by your source, it is going through the cable. So every intermediate devices in the network, they are connected with your Ethernet cables. So suppose the it, it goes through the cable, then the, the, the device which is checking the, uh, what you call the, at the switch, when the, the ARP request comes to this port, it will check the header field. In that header field, what is the source MAC address? What is the destination MAC address? So for this device, you don't go through the check what is the source IP address and destination IP address. Based on source and destination MAC address, it will find the destination MAC address path. So the another port, instead of this, it is having four ports. One is incoming port, three outgoing ports. Based on the destination MAC address, those packets can be simply forwarded. So your attacker is, instead of you know, so, uh, giving the MAC address of the original one, I mean the authenticated legitimated destination, they are providing their MAC address. So the packet, instead of going to this direction, it is directly going to the attacker. So when it is going out of the network, in that case, the attacker is trying to get the MAC address of this uh, default router and replacing in more MAC address. So that is the, the ARP that is used to map the logical IPv4 towards the layer to MAC addresses and then try to build the uh, what you call the address resolution tables. So when the destination IP address is on the same network as the source, then the ARP process sends the IP addresses to all hosts on the network so that the host within the matching IPv4 can reply with the ARP reply. So if the packet is on destination side, then the ARP will learn the destination MAC address as the default gateway. And, you know, uh, uh, if there are the IPv6 or for that it will use the ICMP v6 uh, uh, request packet for discovering the neighbors and as broadcast these frames the ARP request received and processed by every device on the local area network. So here the threat actor can use this ARP spoofing to performing as a uh, you know the active actor such as the default gateway, uh, which we have seen in the video part. So with this, I would like to, you know, stop the session. If you have any further questions,